Uh, our last witness is Paul uh, Harnett, who's a development consultant, he worked with the World Bank, the European Commission, the mm. uh, UK's DFID, but he's also founder of the World Basic Income Campaign, uh, which wants everybody on the planet to be given $10 uh, a month. Um, uh, he's on the line now from Salford. Uh, but, uh, Paul Harnett, this would be more effective and no more expensive than what the aid industry is currently doing? In my experience, uh, yes, very effective. Um, Ten dollars a month. I've I've actually given out about ten pounds, one off ten pound, to people in Malawi about twenty years ago. The impact of that was tremendous. Uh, currently, there's five thousand people in Kenya being given a regular sum per month in the region of ten dollars, and the initial results are looking very, very positive. Okay, Melanie Phillips. <clears throat> Are you not proposing to institutionalise dependency throughout the entire world? Uh, no, I actually think this is a birthright. Um, what seems to have happened throughout the whole of the world is that the world's common resources have been captured by a minority. It's the case that about 800 years ago, if we refer even to this country, there was a a charter of the forest which accompanied the Magna Carta, which gave us all rights over the land in order for all of us to earn an income. Many of those common rights have been taken away from the vast majority of people on this planet. I see basic income as a birthright. This is garbage, isn't it? The vast majority of the resources that have been captured in these benighted uh, parts of the world have been captured by their own leaders, by, their klepto by the kleptocrats and tyrants that enslave populations. Why aren't you directing your energies into trying to free these people to empower themselves by living in free societies? I agree that much of it has been uh, captured by kleptocrats, etc. And I also think that that's been facilitated by the systems that we have around the world, such as those of tax havens. And I think that the centre of corruption in the world is, in fact, the city of London. OK, so you're really motivated by hatred of capitalism, hatred of the city of London, Absolutely hatred not. by the West. Absolutely well, that's what I'm not. hearing from you. I think capitalism is very, very powerful. I believe in free markets. Oh. I think we're in a post-capitalist society where, in your words, it's kleptocracy. OK, um, well, you believe in free markets. That's very interesting. But you also believe in giving £10 to everybody uh, in order to help the poor of the world. Aren't you actually basically a racist? You're basically saying that people in the developing world are not capable, as you are, to make your own way in the world and make your own wealth. I'm a racist. Uh, I read The Economist, actually, sometimes, that well, point, noted left-wing publication. Point proved. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting that there is no way out for most poor people in Africa. It's already been said this evening that poverty is increasing in Africa. What I'm suggesting here is that we've got more than enough money in the world to give everybody a basic income. We have the technology. That's the mobile phone. We can do this. And what I say is surely it would be immoral not to implement a world basic income. Michael Butter. Um Oxfam... Uh, boasts proudly in its publications of uh, engaging in very loud advocacy. Um, do you approve of that? Uh, I actually use some of Oxfam's advocacy material. I find what they say about world inequality very interesting. Each year, when it's the World Economic Forum, they publish a report. In fact, in the last year, 585 billion increase in billionaires' fortunes over the course of the last 10 months. Do you think... A world basic income would cost $900 billion. Do you think that the, you know, the widow contributing her mite to Oxfam understands that what she's paying for is very loud adver advocacy, uh, which, apart from anything else, means dozens of press offices? Do you think people realise that when they think they're contributing to the relief of world poverty, they're paying for advocacy and press officers? You emphasise advocacy. I do. Oxfam also does fundraising, emergency and development. I think I would emphasise that most of their money supports people who go through conflict and natural disasters, and last year that was 8.6 million people supported by Oxfam. I think that that's 
pretty decent work. I could punch holes in it, sure, but I think on balance. Well, help me to punch I a few more holes in it. Let, let, help me to punch a few more holes in it. Um, isn't it not rather ironic that Oxfam engages in all this anti-capitalism propaganda, of which you've given an example, attacking capitalism, attacking capitalism, attacking globalization, when it is actually capitalism that has lifted the world's uh, poor, many of them out of poverty, and indeed more than that, it is the institutions closely associated with capitalism. I mean, things like democracy and the rule of law. Why attack the things that are helping the poor? I haven't heard uh, Oxfam attacking capitalism per se. I think that what a lot of people like to attack are the klept the kleptocratic issues that are going on around the world at the moment. You mean people haven. like Bill Gates who are busy trying to eliminate malaria? Is that the, the sort of capitalists you're attacking? Or Warren Buffett, who's devoting his fortune to uh, good causes. Is that not no, actually I'm... rather effective aid coming from these philanthropists? Well, it could be effective. Um, in my experience, they often undermine national government systems with respect to the health service. Oh, you really are impossible. So rich people <laughs> undermine uh, good work, do they, just because they give their money away? You, you, well, you, I you can give you, 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 you a want example every way, right now. Every way around, like don't you? Hmm? I've worked in over 30 countries in the world. I've seen plenty of examples. Yes, I've walked into hospitals where a nurse's coat is left on the chair because they've walked out of their hospital to go and work for the Bill Gates Foundation. Well, there we are. Bill Gates will take note of that. He's doing a lot of evil with all his billions trying to eliminate malaria. Paul Harnett, thank you, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh,